Hi, my name is Kelly Henry. I'm a registered nurse and a certified diabetes educator, and I work for the Center of Excellence in Diabetes Education here in Northampton, Mass. Today we're going to talk about how to reduce your risk for diabetes. Um, first, I think we need to figure out what the risk factors are. Um, one way to figure out if you're at risk for diabetes is to go to the American Diabetes Association's website of diabetes.org, and they have um, under the title of um, I may have diabetes, you would click on that and go to the risk assessment and you can actually find out if you're at risk. And when you get done taking the risk assessment, it actually tells you what your risk factors are. Some of the risk factors for diabetes are if you're over the age of 40, if you have a family history of diabetes, your mother or your father had diabetes, and or one of them had heart disease, especially if they died young from a heart attack, um, if you ha or any of your siblings have diabetes also. Um, also, if you have high blood pressure, if you have high cholesterol, if you have what we call central obesity, and it doesn't necessarily mean that you're overweight. It means that you carry more weight in the central part of your body, and a lot of times people with this weight have what we call more visceral fat. And this kind of fat makes them at much more risk for diabetes. If you are um, of a race, Native American Indian, Hispanic, Black, um, your Pacific Islander or Asian American, those all put you at a higher risk of diabetes. So first we need to look at all the risk factors and see what risks do you have and then look at how do we lower the risks. The way to lower the risks is really to lead a healthy lifestyle. Um, plenty of activity and also um, looking at your meal plan. One of the best things with meal plans in our country is that we lower the portions. Um, half of the plate should be filled with your non-starchy vegetable, a quarter of your plate should be filled with your starch, and then a quarter of the plate should be filled with your protein. Um, we overeat as Americans. I always tell people, get a smaller plate. Our dinner plates have grown in size. We want to make sure that they're a decent size, um, and then look at what we put on that. If you put a scoop of potato on there, you want to make sure that it's not falling off. If they put the scoop on and it stays together, that's the portion size. Um, same with your non-starchy vegetables. And these, if you're hungry, eat more of your non-starchy vegetables. They're very healthy for us and they have a lot of fiber in them, which slows the digestion of the carbohydrates down and definitely um, uh, makes it much less likely that our blood sugars will go up after meals. The other thing is to have three meals a day. And again, don't drink your carbohydrates. Um, you want to make sure that you get your sugar from good sources. Um, when you're drinking your carbohydrates, we don't, they don't fill us up. They also um, don't have any fiber in them usually or not much fiber in them. And um, they're empty calories. We tend to drink more than we need. So try to stay away from sodas, juices, um, Gatorades, sport drinks, um, and plenty of water three meals a day, and then make sure that you're getting a healthy amount of activity. At least three to four times a week, aerobic exercise, uh, 20 to 30 minutes, and then some strength training possibly mixed in there, and even um, some um, uh, flexibility. But with this, the exercise, it's good to get clearance from your primary care provider before you do take on any exercise if it's any question. To recap, first find out what the risks are or what your risks are for diabetes and then look at your lifestyle and lead a healthy lifestyle to prevent diabetes.